Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done a topical video, but I thought, uh, hey, I finally have something to say. And I'm being really lazy and I'm recording this on my phone, so hopefully the quality is still pretty good. It's a new phone, so hopefully it's a good camera. And I'm actually recording this during Asexual Awareness Week, but it probably won't come out during Asexual Awareness Week. But just to provide a bit of context as to why I've been thinking about this more recently, I thought it's about time that I addressed the... Uh, heated debate about whether asexual people are LGBT or not because for some reason people really like to talk about this and I've never really addressed it I don't think um but I mean on a personal level um I don't really care whether people think that I'm LGBT or not like if I'm speaking to someone and they're like oh yeah well I mean asexuality is valid but based on my definition of what makes something LGBT it doesn't fit my definition I'm like cool whatever I don't really care like that you got to pick your battles and some things don't impact your life so there's no reason to get mad at it um, but when it comes to people writing think pieces and trying to be really exclusive and making life harder for asexual people and kind of bullying that's where I take issue and that's why we need to have a real conversation and something I spotted quite a bit during um pride month um, as you guys know, I was collaborating with Budweiser on their Fly the Flag campaign, which was really inclusive of a whole bunch of sexualities past the T, which I appreciated. And when they said, hey, look, here's asexuality, a lot of people decided to take it upon themselves to write long essays about why we shouldn't have a cup and why we shouldn't have a flag and all that stuff, which was kind of lame. And I've been working on a radio series with BBC about asexuality. Um, so I spent a lot of time like interviewing people who are asexual from all over the world, hearing so many stories. And I also spoke to somebody who had written one of those questionable articles about asexual inclusion in the LGBT plus community. And that was really interesting because it was, we were aiming for a you know, just like a nuanced discussion. And I will be able to link you guys to this conversation when it comes out because it will be in the series, which will be available on BBC Sounds. Um, but in this conversation, the journalist explained to me why, as someone within the community, why she took an issue with asexual people being included. And I noticed that it really came from a place of misinformation, a place of stereotypes and a place of fear. And the fear that people within the LGBT community have when it comes to including asexuality is that they think that we're going to go in there and ruin it. We're going to go in there and tell people, stop holding hands, stop kissing, stop talking about sexuality, stop celebrating your sexuality because we aren't about that life. And that comes from the misconception that most asexual people are repulsed by the mere thought of sex, by the existence of sexuality, and the misconception that asexual people are anti-sex, and we don't want other people to be having sex if we're not doing it, which is, again, asexual people don't necessarily not have sex. So that just kind of plays into the lack of education part. But yeah, that's why I noticed that a lot of this comes from, and when I've listened to other people's, like views on it a lot of it comes down to they think asexual people are repulsed by sex and we're going to go in there and we're going to ruin everyone else's time and we can't relate to the cause and therefore we shouldn't be part of it and it's it's a conversation i feel like shouldn't have as much momentum as it does because it's a really pointless conversation <laughs> in my opinion i mean i understand um wanting to protect your space. I get that. I understand not wanting people to appropriate your struggles. I mean, hello. I get it, trust me. Um, you don't need to start playing the oppression Olympics with me, white gay man. But um, I think the reason why I find the conversation to be a bit pointless is because rather than you know actually getting asexual people involved in the conversation and trying to get to know each other and understand that we actually do have a lot of issues in common we have a lot of experiences in common and that's why a lot of people in the asexual community identifies with the lgbt community so much anyway aside from the very obvious overlaps in the sense of homoromantic asexual people or trans asexual people for example um 
instead of that, people are just going on about like, you know, things that aren't really important. Like, why aren't we talking about how asexual people aren't protected by hate crime laws? Why aren't we talking about um, the unnecessary medication of asexual people or us being taught that there's something wrong with us or people being taught that if you're not straight, then you are mentally ill, that you're, you don't contribute to society, that you're unnatural. Like, shouldn't we be talking about that and uniting over that similar struggle instead of whining about, hey, but I mean, uh, why are you, uh, that rainbow flag isn't for you. You can't stay queer because you're not queer because uh, you're pretty much straight even though you're not straight and you uh you just hate sex and like that's your problem like these are pointless conversations guys and that's why i try not to like i try not to add any more fuel or attention to it but at the same time i mean i talk about asexuality so much in my activism not so much in my daily life and not so much on youtube nowadays but i do and i feel like it's kind of probably seems a bit weird that i haven't addressed this little topic I've always felt like asexual people benefit the LGBT plus community so much because one thing that the LGBT plus community does in such a really important way is that they have nuanced discussions about sexuality. They understand it in a different way to the way that it's been understood for a while in a way that like, you know, mainstream society has tried to ignore and that's where all the oppression comes from. But they have these conversations. They understand that there are different types and different ways of experiencing sexuality in a way that isn't heteronormative and that is perfectly fine and there's a whole amazing culture around it and there's education around it and it's a real community and in that conversation you are severely lacking something if you don't include asexual perspectives your conversations are incomplete your analysis is incomplete everything you're doing is missing something if you don't include asexuality because when it comes down to it, like the LGBT plus community isn't entirely about who you're having sex with. That's that's not the fundamental thing. Like if you're having sex or not, that does not determine whether or not you count as LGBT. It's not about how much oppression you personally experience. That also does not qualify whether or not you identify as LGBT. You can be LGBT and have a super cozy, happy life where nothing has ever happened to you. And you can still go to a pride and throw glitter on your face and march around. Like, no one questions that. But for some reason, when it comes to asexual people, all of a sudden we have to be ticking all these boxes. And I've noticed online, some people like to um, try and school me on oppression as though I suddenly ceased to be a black woman and like I've ceased to have any understanding of how oppression works. The oppression Olympics angle is super old and super unnecessary and totally not what the community is about. Don't get me wrong, I understand that the LGBT plus community in some sense has some bigger fish to fry. I understand that it is incredibly important to place more emphasis on issues like homophobia and on transphobia, which is literally killing people at a higher rate to it than to which asexual people are supposedly being harmed, but at the same time, the fact that no one is even bothering to ask the asexual community what's going on with us, like, you don't know what struggles we're facing right now. There's also this weird idea that, like, if asexual people are involved, then we're kind of taking up space or we're taking up time or we're taking up attention that could be given to something else. Now, I never really understood this idea because it's not really an issue of taking up someone else's space. It's just an issue of being in the same space. Like if you have a panel of people and you throw an asexual person in there, like that doesn't mean you can't include a trans person or you can't include a gay person or you can't pay attention to different kinds of struggles or different perspectives. It's not an either or us versus them, this or that situation. Like isn't the whole point in a rainbow that it includes everybody and that everyone's experiences count in the sense that they aren't heteronormative? Like isn't that kind of the point? Um, so yeah, I also think that is a kind of paranoid fear that isn't necessary. So I guess what I'm really going for in this video is my message to people in the LGBT plus community who do think that asexual people are coming in here to ruin your time. We're really not here to do that. We are a very small part of the community. We are a teeny tiny group, bigger than people think 
bigger than the statistics say that we're still a small group and we are not big or willing to overpower the entire community and take over pride and make everything purple and tell everybody just to shut up sit down and read a book we're not here to do that that was never the agenda all we want to do is be able to be part of a community where, like everyone else, we can feel proud of who we are, we can feel comfortable, we can celebrate, and we can just be ourselves. That's the point in Pride. That's all we're trying to do. Not trying to get in anybody's way, not trying to step on anyone's toes, just trying to be there and be queer. And the people in the asexual community who are getting very involved in these conversations and are really bothered by it, guys, I encourage you, pick your battles. If you hear these kind of attitudes coming from someone who is in a position where it could actually impact multiple asexual lives, get on that. If this is coming from like the chairman of Pride or something, get on it. If this is coming from Sally from North Carolina, freaking leave Sally alone. Sally isn't that significant. Like Sally is not going to impact our lives. Just close the tab, click another space on your phone and continue living your best life because these people, they're just trying to wind you up. They don't really care that much. You don't really need to care that much. We need to be picking our battles. Let's spend less time worrying about whether or not people include us and just do more to try and get our own visibility out there. Because when it comes down to it, it needs to be practical. It needs to have real life implications, not just stuff going on on internet forums in the depths of Reddit. It needs to be like actual real life stuff, real life spaces, real life interactions. Because a lot of the time, that's the stuff that that matters the most. That's why pride isn't just on the internet. That's why it's a physical space where thousands of people go. So that's what I think we need to be focusing on as a community is just making things more tangible and getting the message out there to people who are actually receptive and picking our battles wisely. Don't let these things get to you because guaranteed they're gonna log off their computers, go get some lunch and they're gonna forget all about it and you're gonna be mad about it all day. So don't think about it. That's my advice this Asexual Awareness Week, even though it probably isn't Asexual Awareness Week when I post this. Every week should be Asexual Awareness Week. It is for me anyway. Okay, I'm gonna end this now. Uh, <laughs> this video was so impromptu. I am sorry if this is a total mess, but I thought it's been a while since I've given you guys like a topical post and I might as well do it. I will let you know when my BBC Asexuality series is out. If you want to keep up to date with all the activism I'm doing, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which is at the Yasmin Bamwa. And you can like and subscribe or share whatever you want to do. I don't really mind that much, to be honest, I'm not on here often. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.